Reactor number four at Chernobyl nuclear power station overheated during a routine test and exploded. A cloud of radioactive gas spread across Europe and beyond. The explosion was 400 times more radioactive than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima in the Second World War. Authorities declared a 30-kilometer exclusion zone around the plant. 135,000 people were ordered to leave their homes. Most would never return. Their ordeal was only just beginning, and 25 years later, they'd still be living with the legacy of that night. When I was younger, I was playing with my friends. We went to a nearby village three or four kilometers away. The village was empty. It had been empty since the first days of the disaster. We all found some strawberries in the village and we were really happy about this. But when we picked them and ate them, it was like eating a piece of concrete or sand. And when I went back home and I asked my mother what was wrong with the strawberries, she said you're not allowed to go there because there's a radiation cloud on that village. You shouldn't even be there, never mind eating berries. That was the first time I realized it could be quite serious. Lisa was nine when the Chernobyl reactor exploded. She lived outside the exclusion zone, so her parents saw no reason to move. Our village was not evacuated. I was living in that village through university. I was married there. It was only when our son was born that I realized all the disasters that Chernobyl can cause for people. We moved away after the birth of our son. Stas was born 11 years after the disaster at Chernobyl. But he too must live with the effects of that day. For playing chess, you don't need much physical power. You need more intellectual power. The major problem is that I can walk only on my knees. And it seems to me the reason is that I was born too close to Chernobyl. A city frozen in time a generation scarred for life. What is their future?